Good evening, Mount Pleasant, and welcome to Channel 7 Action News. I'm Jeff Blevins. And I'm Brian Elizabeth. Here are the top stories for today, November 28th. Police received two separate confessions to the incident involving four nooses found in a room of the Engineering and Technology Building at Central Michigan University. An anonymous person commented Friday afternoon on the Central Michigan Life website claiming the nooses were hung as a Halloween joke. The unidentified individual said in the Friday comment he or she was considering coming forward. A male student contacted CMU police Saturday morning with a similar admittance of guilt. It is uncertain at this time, however, whether the student who called police Saturday has any connection to the individual who posted the comment on Friday. And in response to the four hangman's nooses, more than 30 students marched through campus Friday chanting, no justice, no peace. The Reverend Charles E. Williams II of the National Council for Community Empowerment stood in front of the Bovee University Center to call for a federal investigation into last week's incident. The NCCE are saying this is not a black and white issue. Williams added this is a call to rally against all hate crimes. Williams and the NCCE hope the nooses and the rally will push the administration to action. Federal investigators have indicted a 52-year-old Bay City man on charges that he persuaded a minor to perform sexual acts to, so he could perform, excuse me, so he could create pornographic images. Stephen G. Marsh was arraigned Wednesday in the U.S. District Court on charges of manufacturing child pornography. Marsh coerced the boy September 27th to engage in sexually explicit conduct so he could film or photograph it, investigators said. Marsh does have a previous criminal history, which includes two convictions of sexual assault and possession of child pornography. If convicted again, Marsh could face a minimum of 35 years to life in prison. And nothing is rewarding as being named a Teacher of the Year, and for Professor Norma Bailey, she has received that award. She has been awarded an outstanding middle-level educator at Central Michigan University. And she has a, a, got an excellence in teaching awards. She received her award given out by the Carnegie Foundation on November 15th. Students say that Bailey goes out of her way to make the student a comfortable place. Bailey wants her students to know that she is dedicated to her job and wants her students to learn. And in case you wanted somewhere to gamble besides the new MGM Grand Casino, the new Motor City Casino was open for VIPs and media to see yesterday afternoon. Owner Marion Illich says they have a beat of Detroit because they work and live there. The casino opens to the public today at 3 p.m. The $300 million project includes renovations to the old casino in addition to the old Wonder Bread factory. And most youngsters don't really get much in the outdoors and understand until they're older. But for the Stadfeld family, the or just getting outdoors, couldn't start at a younger age. Their father, John, is a big game hunter who travels to Alaska and Wyoming in search of big trophy game animals. And for his 13-year-old daughter, Kayla, and his 7-year-old son, Josh, they both joined Dad in the blind in search of that big buck. While on their hunting 40 acres in Remus, they're waiting for that big buck to walk into their area. Josh keeps himself busy by playing with her Etch-a-Sketch, and Kayla listens to her iPad and even does homework. For Kayla, she just enjoys being outdoors with her brother and her dad. Wayne County is planning to spend over $400,000 to run advertisements in the Detroit Free Press, informing property owners to be aware of the current thousands of foreclosures. The foreclosures are due to the thousands of people who are property owners and have neglected to pay property taxes in two or more years. The 121-page list, which will run in the Free Press for the next two Sunday editions, is just one of many attempts to make sure the owners know they are on the list, so as few property owners as possible lose their assets. And in another blow to Detroit's tarnished image, the Motor City pushed past St. Louis to become the nation's most dangerous city, according to Congressional Quarterly Incorporated Publication. The 14th annual City Crime Rankings, Crime in Metropolitan America, released Sunday, is based on a September 24th crime statistics report by the Federal Bureau, Bureau excuse me, of Investigation. The FBI reported, report collected data from 378 cities on per capita rates for homicide, rape, robbery, aggra aggravated assault, excuse me, burglary, and auto theft. Although Detroit has pushed St. Louis back to the nation's second most dangerous city, Flint, Michigan is still a close, unfortunate second. And in Laytonsville, Maryland, a man, and, a man, his ex-wife, and three children were found dead at Unity Park, 25 miles northwest of Washington, D.C. Police suspect it was a murder homicide in which 40-year-old David Peter Brockdorf shot and killed 43-year-old Gail Louise Pumphrey and their three children, ages 6, 10, and 12. The woman's body, along with the body of, bodies of two boys and one girl, were discovered by park police officers when they noticed two separate vehicles still running in the deserted park area. Brockdorf and a rifle were discovered nearby. According to investigators, the couple, who had a history of domestic violence, were apparently exchanging custody of the children. 
and a man who survived five self-inflicted stab wounds in Kelmsford, Massachusetts, has pleaded not guilty during an arraignment for charges of first-degree murder. 36-year-old Jeffrey McGee is accused of killing his estranged 31-year-old wife after puncturing her jugular vein. Christine McGee's body was found in the man's Kelmsford apartment shortly after Jeffrey McGee, excuse me, Jeffrey McGee had intentionally crashed his Toyota Corolla into an oncoming truck. The couple's three-year-old son, Gavin, who was with Jeffrey during the collision, told police and court officials, Dad made Mommy dead. Daddy made her all blood. McGee, excuse me, McGee will return to court next month for a probable cause hearing. Taking a look at national news, the inventor of Gatorade died Tuesday at 8. Dr. Bruce Cohn, dean of medicine at Florida, said that Kay died after a long-fought battle with cancer. Dr. Robert Crane invented the drink back in 1965 to help athletes at Florida recover after athletic contests and to help them after battling heat. Dr. Cade named it after the Florida mascot Gator, thus creating Gatorade. With his creation, he brought $150 million into the college royalties. He is now, the drink is now owned by the PepsiCo company. Well, that sure was a shame, Jeff. I know I've had my fair share of Gatorade. What's going on in sports now? Well, we got some sad news to report this morning after being shot in a in the crucial artery in his leg during a home evasion, Pro Bowl safety Sean Taylor has died from this gunshot wound. This comes after Taylor was not in uniform this past Sunday due to an injury. Redskins owner Daniel Schneider said that this is the worst imaginable tragedy. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell would honor Taylor with a moment of silence in addition to each NFL team that will wear a number 21 sticker on their helmets. Redskins players wear an additional number 21 patch on their, on their uniforms. Excuse me. Our hearts go out to the Taylor family in this time of sadness. Well, in case you missed it on Thanksgiving, you missed one heck of a passing clinic put on by Packers quarterback Brett Favre after beating the, the Lions 37-26 at Ford Field. On their first drive of the second half, Favre took it 80 yards and passed it on every single play to cap it off with a one-yard pass from Favre to Greg Jennings. Favre finished today going 20, 31 for 21, uh, 31 for 24, excuse me, I mean 31 for 41, excuse me, for 381 yards and two touchdowns. He played 20 straight passes, a new NFL record. Ryan Grant had 15 carries for 101 yards and a touchdown. Dallin Driver led the pack with 10 catches for 147 yards. Jason Hansen netted four field goals for the Lions, and John Kidd went 90 for 40 for 224 yards and one touchdown. Pass to Kelvin Johnson. The Lions hit the road next week and head to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Kickoff is set for noon on Fox. Well, Brian, it's a little going to be a little snowy this weekend, isn't it? <laughs> snowy is right, Jeff. Well, you might want to set those alarm clocks back about 10 minutes. It's going to be snowing from here until the end of the weekend. And that's about it for your weather. For more up-to-date weather with Doppler 7 HD forecast, click on the website below. This has been your news for Channel 7 Action News. I'm Brian Mizaveth. And I'm Jeff Blevins. Good night.